Welcome back to Dark Horse Auto and Diesel. This is part two of the ZF6 swap series. From this point on, from wiring to steering column changes to cutting a massive hole in your pristine floor and everything else in between, we're going to dive deep into the specifics of the swap. So sit back, grab a beverage, and learn something, or if you're feeling really brave, just go ahead and follow along with me on your truck. So let's get back into it. One thing, too, that I feel is kind of important to mention is I'm sure you'll notice that I kind of jump around quite a bit doing different stuff at different times in the video. Most of what I'm doing really doesn't have to be done in any kind of specific order, and the jumping around is just because I'm pretty sure I have ADD. So you can follow along if you want, or you can watch the whole thing and just kind of pick and choose where and when you want to do the different parts. But So just know that. Now that we got the slush box out of the way, we can move on to step two of the ZF6 swap. So now what we're going to need to do is take the automatic flex plate off and the spacer here, the aluminum spacer. And these bolts here are 18 millimeter. Now that the bolts and that uh, big washer thing there is out of the way, we can go ahead and remove the flex plate. It's not very heavy. And then also the spacer here. <clears throat> that needs to come off the back of the block as well because the flywheel gets bolted directly to the crankshaft. Now to get the spacer off, you may need to do a little bit of prying. If you do, be very, very gentle with it because right behind that, that's your rear main. You don't want to damage that because otherwise you'll be replacing that as well. Next, we can get our spacer plate off of there and... If yours still exists, it might have these little, uh, I don't know what they are, holder on or clip thingies. Um, just get behind them with a little screwdriver or something and uh, get them out to where you can get a bigger pry bar under them. I'm going to be careful with mine because I'd like to reuse them when I put the thin plate on for the manual. And watch it when you get to the end because uh, they tend to go flying off once you hit the end of the dowel pin here yeah like that and you'll probably lose it great now I gotta find that oh there it is now we can go ahead and just work it off of the dowels there gentle prying is allowed if needed and then once you get it out to the end just slides right off of there. So what we're going to do in this part here to start with is we're going to remove most of the interior here, the front seats anyway. You know, if you have a regular cab, obviously you're removing pretty much the whole thing. You don't necessarily have to remove the seats, but uh, you might as well because otherwise you're going to be fighting around them because we have to cut a hole right there. To get your seats out, I don't know if your truck will still have them or not, depending on the age of it and condition. These little guys here, you just pop these off. Sometimes that little metal retaining ring will stay in there. Other times it uh, just falls out and you lose it and you can't put these things back on. Then we can go ahead and start removing all of our bolts for the seat. These ones here with the nuts, those are 18 millimeter. And then uh, these ones, I'll go up to the front a little easier to see. These bolts here are um, actually a T55 plus. You can use a regular T55, I've done it before, but I wouldn't really advise it because if they're kind of tight, you can round them out and then you're screwed. Right now with the seat unbolted, let's tip it back. And depending on your trim level of your truck, you may have more or less connectors than I do, but you just unhook this one here on mine, and then we can lift the seat out of here. Then you can do the same on the passenger side. I don't know why mine are different from side to side, but they are. Alright, passenger seat's unbolted. We can go ahead and pull that out now. 
and then we can work on the center console, which if, uh, you know, once again, depending on your trim level of truck, you may have a different center console. This type here, you have to pull the two front seats out before you can get it out. But there's some other ones that just have uh, the captain's chairs and just a single center console that's just screwed down to the floor. I believe there's four screws to hold that in, four or six, something like that, down in the very bottom of it. And that just lifts out, which if you want, you can take that out before the seats if you have that style. Then for the center console, there's a Torx bolt there and another 18 millimeter there. And it should lift out. Yep, those last two bolts are bolt and nut. And then this thing is loose. And you can pull it on out. And now you get a treasure hunt. You get to find the most disgusting change you'll ever see. Probably $10 worth of it. And about uh, 35 french fries. That is much better. So now we're going to need to take the carpet back. You don't need to take it completely out. But we do need to at least roll it back part way. So we can get up into here and do some work. And to do that, you need to take these trim pieces off. One on the other side too. And to do that, you just uh, get up underneath it and just gently pry up on it. And hopefully it comes out without breaking all your little clips. Usually you can just kind of work your hands up underneath it. Oh, usually, not always. If it's being stubborn, don't, uh, don't pull on one side too much because you will end up breaking this plastic. Hopefully, while we're doing this, we didn't break any of the clips off underneath. Cool. They actually all came out with it, too. A lot of times these metal... Oh, nope. Sometimes the metal clips will get stuck in there. Yeah, you do that on both sides. Then you need to pop these kick panels out. And to do that, there's just one little push pin up here. And once you get it out far enough, you can usually just pull it out by hand because the tool's probably not long enough. And then just... Uh, it out it's got two clips there that clip into there do the same on the driver's side Put that pin there and then that just pulls right out I don't know if all the trucks have these but mine does there's two of these little doohickeys here there's one over there on the driver's side that I already got out but just take a Phillips head screwdriver and well maybe thread it up there it goes Now we can go ahead and start pulling our carpet back. I don't think I need to show you how to do that. You can probably figure that part out. And now if you're switching to a uh, manual shift 4x4 like I am, you can go ahead and remove... Mine only had two screws on it right there and there. Take them screws out and then you can pry that piece out of there, that plate. Obviously if you're two-wheel drive or already have a manual shift, or you're keeping the electronic shift, you don't have to do anything with this plate. If you are removing it, you're probably going to end up destroying it in the process. That uh, rubbery sealant crap they have on there is pretty dang good, and you're probably going to have to get underneath it with a screwdriver or a chisel or something, just kind of hammer in all the way around it in order to pop it loose. Then once you get your carpet pulled back, you can start getting prepared to Cut a big hole out of your floor. This is a part that I've been dreading. This is probably going to take a little bit of trial and error. I'm not going to show you my whole process of doing it. Cut a little bit at a time. It's better to have to cut a little bit of extra off than end up cutting too much off. Then you're kind of screwed. So I'm going to get this cut out and 
get that floor pan put in hopefully here and uh, I'll see you once I get done with that. You can weld it, you can rivet it. I've seen people use self-tapping screws. I haven't decided if I'm going to weld it or rivet it yet. I'm definitely not going the self-tapping screw route. So at this point you can see I obviously don't have the floor pan welded in yet uh, but I do have a nice big hole here and that's actually where I'm going to stop with the floor for right now. You know, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get the flywheel and pressure plate put on and uh, get some of this other stuff done while, the, while I still have a nice access hole here to get to everything. And maybe even get the transmission put in, at least temporarily, just so I can make sure that all the clearances are right. Make sure there isn't going to be any more modifications needed to the floor pan. And I'll be honest here too, I think I might have screwed up a bit here with this part. So I'm just going to stop here. There comes a time in a man's life where he realizes his limitations, and sheet metal work is definitely not my strong suit. So I've got a guy that's probably going to come over here in a little bit and uh, weld this up for me. So if you're a good enough welder and good enough sheet metal that you can do it, then that's great. I'm a mechanic. I'm not a body guy, so I'm just going to quit here before I completely screw it up. The next step, we're going to cut these dowel pins down, these alignment pins. You don't necessarily have to cut them down sometimes, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that because them being this long is just going to make installation a lot more complicated than it needs to be. As you can see here on mine, the holes for that goes, uh, goes all the way through. On some of these I've seen, they don't. They'll end up having... A little piece of casting that just comes over this so if your transmission that you have does have the little dome over that you definitely have to cut them down if yours is like this like i said you don't have to but it's going to make installation a lot easier just getting them cut down to the proper length so what we'll do is we'll measure the thickness here and then also the thickness of the spacer plate which the spacer plate has to go on before the flywheel so the thickness here is uh, a little over three quarters of an inch. 21 millimeters, whatever, so uh, 13 sixteenths of an inch. And then our spacer plate here, measure that. We've got right at about eighth of an inch. So according to my math, that's 15 sixteenths. So what I'm gonna do is just cut those pins to where they're about an inch sticking out of the block. All right, then once you've got these cut down to, like I said, about an inch out of the block, go ahead and put a, a light chamfer on the edges of it. I just used my uh, cutoff wheel there to put that on, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we can go ahead and get our plate and get that stuck on there. And then if you were able to keep these, if you didn't lose them, we can go ahead and put these on to help hold this little plate on. Or lose them in the process of trying to put them on. They're a pretty, uh, pretty snug fit on there. And a little trick to getting these on a uh, 11 millimeter deep well seems to fit just perfectly on those and then you can just kind of tap it on there with a hammer once you get it over the edge you can just go ahead and push it the rest of the way on and when you put them on you see they're somewhat directional the little fingers should be sticking towards you otherwise you probably won't even be able to get it on and if you broke those or lost those it's really not a big deal they're not really critical they're just more or less an assembly aid so if you don't have them, don't worry about buying any. Just leave them go. So now we're just about ready to put our flywheel on. But before you do that, I've got a, got a little recommendation here for you. The factory uses a pilot bearing, which is just a sealed lubricated bearing, a needle bearing, a roller bearing, whatever. Very prone to failure. And when they do, they chew up your input shaft on your transmission. Now there is a, a kit out there that 
I guess they put a sleeve over the input shaft with a modified bearing, but you still are end up with the same, you're still left with the same problem to where you've got a bearing that if the seal fails on it, it loses all of its lubrication and once again, trashes everything. So what I did here, this is actually a bronze oil light bushing. And uh, I want to say these came out of, uh, like this specific one was for a late 60s Mustang with a 302 or something in it. Um, I ended up getting this from National Parts Depot. The part number for it was 7600-5. Um, there was also PB... 50J as a part number listed on the bag too. I will put that in the description. But the advantage of this is the bronze is softer than the steel of the input shaft. And being an oil light bearing, it actually has oil impregnated into the bronze. So it's self-lubricating and if something does happen, it will sacrifice the bushing rather than your input shaft. And this is a heck of a lot easier to change. Uh, there's also a nylon bushing that I've seen in there. Those work for a while, but those are almost too soft. So I would recommend going with this here. Another thing on this too is a torque spec. This here is from South Bend, and I called them this morning, and they told me, uh, what was it? I wrote it down. Um, 90 to 100 foot-pounds with red Loctite. Uh, the pressure plate is 18 to 20 foot-pounds. But uh, in the book, oh, just triggered a liberal. Flywheel dry plate bolts. According to the book, it's 89 foot-pounds. And for the pressure plate, it says 21. I mean, the difference between 20 and 21 is pretty negligible. But, I mean, if you're using a factory flywheel, you might want to just go with 89. That's up to you. And from what I know, it's always been recommended to put the Loctite on it, whether it's a factory one or not. But, oh, trigger liberal again. I'm going to do mine at 100 with the red Loctite because that was a recommendation from the manufacturer of this particular clutch. And to make things easier during installation too, you'll notice an extra hole here. Pay attention to where that is and pay attention to where the dowel pin sticking off of the back of the crankshaft is because that dowel pin, roll pin, whatever you want to call it, go, goes through here. And this thing's kind of weighty, so you want to try to make sure you do it as quickly as possible. I've already got two of them started here, but uh, you're just going to work around in a cross pattern all the way around. Nothing fancy, just put a nice little strip down it. I think I got a little heavy on that one, but that's okay. Yeah, definitely a little heavy on that one, but at least it won't come out. And you'll have to figure out a way to uh, keep the engine from spinning while you're torquing these down. And I just took and jammed a pry bar in there. Seems to work pretty well. And just go around and do that to all of them. So after about the third bolt, I realized I was just wasting thread locker. You really only need to put it on about the uh, bottom half of the threads because when you look in there, that's really all that's engaging. There's a whole lot of space in there that the bolts actually aren't threading into anything. Then we can go ahead and get our clutch plate and our pressure plate put on. Having the alignment tool is very beneficial. It is possible to get that lined up without the alignment tool. I've done it before but it's very difficult to get it exactly right. Um, and then as far as putting your pressure plate on, some flywheels will have a, a dowel pin sticking off of it that kind of holds it up for you. This one doesn't, so you know, if you're doing one of these like this, you're going to have to just hold it up there while you get uh, like two top bolts put in, just enough to hold it. Go ahead and get all eight bolts all the way around just thread it in by hand and then you're going to want to tighten them all down evenly you know work across top bottom left right and just keep doing that with all of them to draw them down evenly and then we'll torque them down then once you got the pressure plate all torqued down we can 
polar alignment tool out, which is usually a pretty snug fit in there. There we go. And then what I like to do too before I put everything back together is just take a real light coating of grease and just put on the end of these fingers. You don't want to put it on too heavy because you don't want it slinging off and getting onto your clutch plate. But, you know, just a little bit to try to keep some of the wear down on the end of your fingers here. Next, I'm going to remove the automatic brake pedal and put on the manual pedal. I have seen or heard of some guys where they'll just take and uh, cut part of this off and just buy the pad for the manual brake pedal, the skinnier one. But since I've got a parts truck, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the entire pedal assembly and put a different one on. And we're also going to put the clutch pedal in here while we're at it too, after we do the brake pedal. So to take the brake pedal off, there is six nuts to hold it on. There's uh, one there, one up above it, kind of hard to get to. Those two, and then there's also two up here at the top. And you take all those off, and uh, there's also a little little clip thing. Let's see if I can get the camera up in there. That needs to come off. And then you can also unplug the uh, sensor here. And then the little clip. You can. It's a pretty tough clip, but it will come out. Pull out on it right here. And then it'll come out. take the nuts off and those are 13 millimeter once you've got all the nuts loose inside you can come out here and take your master cylinder and hydro boost assembly and just kind of pull it towards the front of the truck a little bit and then come back inside you should be able to just pull it out of there mine out a little bit more but you get the idea there so getting this out is actually quite the pain your uh, firewall insulation is pretty much guaranteed to give you issues with it so you just kind of have to work with that and eventually it will come out next you can get the little uh, if yours still has it there's a little piece of insulation right there also a plastic cover so with mine, I had a whole bunch of wires run through it because that made a really convenient spot. Now I'm going to have to find a new place to run all my wires, but that's for another time. I'm not going to worry about putting that on video. So now we can go ahead and install our clutch pedal. So when you're going to install this, it helps to pop the spring off of it. Um, you can see mine's been pretty heavily modified here. That's a topic for another video. Basically, the... Uh, factory setup on it if you don't know is just a little crap plastic bushing that sticks off or little pin that sticks off here with this crappy little plastic bushing that they constantly break so i've fixed that design with uh, oil light bearings this is going to be pretty difficult for me to do one-handed but you can see there's two studs there that goes through the top of the pedal and then the two bolts go through there and then you'll attach them on the uh, underneath the hood and all of those are 13 millimeter so if you have gauges and you had everything nicely tucked up in there up above the pcm you're going to have to redo all that so that's going to be fun and also the uh, shift cable here for the automatic is going to have to go and i might just go ahead and pull the pcm out too while i'm at it just to be able to get that clutch pedal up in there We'll see about the PCM, but this cable here is going to have to go, so we'll go through that next. So to remove the linkage, you need to come uh, right there, and that just pops off of there. 
then that piece will slide to the right of the screen here, be towards the firewall of the truck. Then come down here and just uh, work that grommet loose and push it down through the floor. Come on. It's hooked on something underneath. All right, yeah, I see what the problem was. There. Then uh, just pull it on through. And throw it away or do whatever you want with it. All right, then once you've struggled for another 10 minutes, set every cuss word in the book and Maybe even made up a few new ones. You should be able to get it up in there and uh, get your nuts loosely threaded on on the inside and then also on the outside. And then uh, you can start kind of snugging them up. You have to kind of work them evenly so that it's pulled up and forward towards the firewall all the way. So just kind of work them a little bit. You can figure that part out, I'm sure. Just don't torque one side down or torque the inside down and not the outside or vice versa. Make sure you do them somewhat evenly. And when you're tightening these ones up on the outside or underneath the hood, I would recommend getting a swivel and some extensions because there's really not any room to work down in there. <laughs> 